faith, family, and the future of our community. Welcome to Ashonda at Large. When I was a child, my sister and I were, were a part of what was called the National Honors Choir. And uh, we had to go to different places uh, as children and sing songs. Um, but one of the songs I remember specifically, out of all the songs, and this is 30 years back, was a song by the name of Hashi Venu. And that's the song that you just heard. Um, that song stayed with me. And I didn't understand why um, that song would just every few years, in these last few years, um, especially as I've come to know more of my Hebrew roots, um, has come up and sprung up in my heart. And I will sing it every now and then and um, not know why I'm singing it, not know why that song has never left me. But I was listening to Pastor Omar Tebow, and he was talking about the dry bones of Ezekiel. And at the, uh, towards the end of his sermon, he said the Ruach um, HaKadet. He said the Ruach, and I, immediately I thought, Ruach HaKadesh. And once again, the song Hashi Venu popped up into my spirit. Um, and I heard the word Kadesh. Uh, toward the end of that song, it says, Kadesh, Kadesh, Yemenu, ve, yemenu Keke Dem. And um, before I had heard in that song the word Adonai, and so I thought, oh, this song must be Latin. I had no idea until it sprang up into my spirit, Kadesh, Kadesh, Yemenu Keke Dem, that that song was potentially a Hebrew song. So immediately I go to Google it, right? Like, why didn't I Google it before? But all of a sudden I go to Google it. And sure enough, I Google it and it is a Hebrew song. Now they say about this song, that it is sung uh, in synagogues as the ark is closed after the Torah service is a prayer. It says it's one of the most significant prayers in Jewish tradition. But this is the kick for me. Its lyrics are the words of the book of Lamentation, chapter 5, verse 21. So all of a sudden, I'm just like really like entrenched with, wow, I cannot believe this. I've been singing a song in Hebrew for the last 30 years. 30 years ago I was singing this and I had no idea that I was singing our song. And so that's what we're going to talk about today um, in this discussion. The words in Lamentation chapter 5 verse 21 say, Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. Now I went ahead and I read um, the whole chapter. Lamentation was a book written by the prophet Jeremiah, and uh, it's one of the most, um, obviously the namesake, Lamentation. It's a book of lamenting for the children of Israel. Jeremiah, a prophet who was in a time when Israel appeared to be prospering, but the Most High 
have put on him and that because of the idolatry of Israel that he was going to send a nation from the north to utterly destroy him. And they did not want to hear what Jeremiah had to say. They had their false prophets. They had all these people who were coming against, you know, the prosperity gospel people are coming against the word of destruction that was going to come upon the house of Israel. Um, but as Jeremiah prophesied, um, Babylon, the Babylonian king came in and took away the children of Israel. We know um, that was during the time of King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, and so he wrote the book of Lamentation, weeping for his people. And at the last verse, it says, but thou hast utterly rejected us. Thou art very wroth with us. Thou art very wroth against us. I'm going to take my time to read to you all from this chapter because I think it's important that we understand the signs of the time and the days that we're in as a people. Um, I don't believe it's by mistake that the Most High Yah has continued to spring this particular song up into my spirit. Um, and especially considering those words, restore us, O Most High Yah, restore us. It talks about returning unto us, you know, kind of like Kumbaya, come by here, Most High Yah. Um, turn thou us unto turn thou us unto thee, O Most High Yah, and we shall be turned, renew our days as of old. Um, during that time, I'm going to read to you what it says in Lamentation 5. It says, Remember, O Most High Yah, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. We have given the hand to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. Servants have ruled over us. There is none that doth deliver us out of their hand. We get our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. They ravished the women in Zion and the maids in the city of Yehudim. Princes are hanged up by their hand. Their faces of elders were not honored. They took the young men to grind, and the children fell under the wood. The elders have ceased from the gate, the young men from their music. The joy of our heart has ceased. Our dance is turned into mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. For this our heart is faint. For these things our eyes are dim. Because of the mountain of Zion, which is desolate, the foxes walk upon it. Thou, O Most High Yah, remainest forever, thy throne from generation to generation. Wherefore dost thou forget us forever and forsake us so long? Turn us, turn thou us unto thee, O Most High Yah, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old, but thou hast utterly rejected us. Thou art very wroth against us. As I read those words, I couldn't help but to think of our people today. I couldn't help but to think that this sounded so akin to Deuteronomy 28 and all of the things that we see happening within our community. I was at the playground and I saw a mother who was dealing with her children and just the, um, the way that she was speaking to her children was very, very frustrated. She was cursing at them and she had no peace and she had no, um, no patience with her children. And I looked at the other ethnic groups that were there and I thought, okay, well, here it is that a lot of times what we see with our community is when a mom gets angry with her child, um, you'll see her going out, being very loud and disruptive and making, you know, those around her feel as though she does not really care too much about her children, the way she's talking to them, the way she's cursing at them. And I felt so bad because, you know, the last thing that I want to do is to be against my own people and say, hey, listen, you know, like you're making us look bad. But I thought about it on a deeper level and I said, man, this sister is going through tremendous internal spiritual battles. She's going through some stuff that she doesn't even understand. She is reacting the same way her forefathers reacted 
to her and what was reacted to them. It's a lot of oppression. It's a lot of persecution, mental, emotional, spiritual persecution that our people have dealt with for such a long time. But we as a people, those of us who understand who we are, we're called to be the light and the salt of the earth. We're called to first reach our people. And I made a decision as the end uh, was nearing for my time to be there. The one mother had already left uh, with her children, but I made a decision to speak to another sister that I saw there. And I said, hey, listen, you look how I feel. I said, pretty tired, huh? And she said, yeah. I said, well, just take it one day at a time. She says, that's all I can do. And I can understand her pain because most of us, we understand that very personally. We understand what it is, the pain, to be in this foreign system, to be in this foreign world without an identity, not understanding who we are. but. We have to fight for our brethren. We have to fight for the truth. We have to fight that our freedom will come. And this is exactly what Jeremiah is doing here when he's praying this prayer. He's saying, turn thou us unto thee, O Most High Yah. Turn us back unto you, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. Many of our people have never known what it was like to be in a situation where there's peace, where there's real prosperity, where there's real joy, where there's real wholeness. Many of our people are coming from one form of brokenness to the next because of curse, because of idolatry, because of not knowing who we are. But I know that this song is sung in synagogues. Um, and I cannot uh, tell you all for sure whether or not this is the actual Hebrew text or if it's mixed in with um, their other dialect that they use their Germanic tongue mixed with Hebrew. But when I heard the words, I do believe that this is the actual Hebrew text that is saying, Hashi venu, Hashi venu, Adonai, Eleka, Vena Shuva, Vena Shuva, Kadesh, Kadesh, Yemenu Kekedem. I believe those are actual Hebrew words to the actual prayer that Jeremiah was praying for his people. So I say this is our song. This is our song. Most High Yah return us unto you that we may be turned. Turn us unto you and renew our days as of old. Help us to not be in this place of bondage any longer. This second Babylon or second Egypt is like it said in this chapter that we worked to make the Egyptians and the Assyrians fat, give them bread. But what about us? Well, what about us? He cares about us. And I believe that it's important for us to understand that he does care about us. He cares about us a whole lot. I mean, for him to preserve those words in my spirit for 30 years, I've sung a lot of songs. But that song, not even in English vernacular, I remembered every single word and I have never forgotten it. It has a different and a renewed meaning to me now that I know the language, that I know my identity. And so I share it with you. The song is Hashivenu. And may you be blessed by it. May you cry the same prayer that the Most High Yah would turn us back to Himself, that we will be turned and that He will renew our days the way it used to be before all the famine, before all the curse, before all the warring, before all the confusion, before all the identity loss, that we would return unto Him as a people ready to serve Him and walk and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Well, I just wanted to share that with y'all today. This was something that was near and dear to my heart, and now I hope that it becomes near and dear to yours. May the Most High keep you and bless you. Definitely let me know what you think about Hashivenu in the comment section. Let me know what you think about us as a people and coming up out of the slumber of dry bones into receiving new life. As always, please like and share. And until next time, love yourself without hating your enemies. Yah bless and shalom.